now I'm just picking at myself. Now I'm just like, everything's broken. So we're going to three different plastic surgeons and we're going to see what they would say about how to change my face into a model standard. I don't feel like personally I would ever go to a plastic surgeon, but I am curious to see what they would say about my face. And I am curious to see what I would feel about it. I expect to be told that I there's gonna be like a total tear down. I think that we live in the golden age of body positivity, but I do think that doesn't extend to faces. Often when I'm reading comments online, I'll see negative comments about my face that I didn't even think of before. People say I look like a thumb, the female version of Drew Carey. Honestly, we live in the golden age of insults more than anything. We've been talking about what we think the surgeons will say, and we think that they're either going to give three completely different descriptions of what they would do to my face, or they're going to all say the same thing and then I'm gonna have just the same generic Sears catalog face. <laughs> Going to Surgeon 1, I'm feeling really nervous. What if my face is like an old house that we have to flip in order to return on investment? My name is Dr. David Amron. I'm a dermatologic surgeon and the founder and medical director of the Roxbury Institute in Beverly Hills, California. So what is a typical consultation like? The usual way of going about it um, as a doctor is just to ask, so what are you here for? What do you want to do? Um, I really don't do it that way. I, I, I very quickly uh, turn it around and take control. When I look at somebody's face, I categorize it into all these areas and I kind of quickly come with my own idea of a treatment plan. At first I thought it was weird that the doctor would just tell me exactly what he wanted to do to my face, like it's my face, not, you know, your face. But it makes sense, like he's a professional, he's seen lots and lots of faces. So if I came to you, me personally, if I came to you and I said, what would you do to my face in order to bring it to like an optimal model standard? What okay. would you do to my face? Right now, you want to go into it? Yeah. Uh, you ready to go? Yeah, let's go. Let's Good, go. let's do it. Let's take a look. So this is obviously just a thought experiment and not a thing that's actually gonna happen to my face. Area number one, expression lines. Botox here, mm -hmm. that's it. Not here, not here. Mm -hmm. Area number two, gravity. You're starting to get a little bit of settling of the eyebrow area. It's weird because we're looking at my face in the mirror while he's describing the things happening to my face. And it's like, oh yeah, I guess that is a thing that I never thought about that you can see because you're a professional. Oh, I wonder if other people notice it. Personally, I'm recommending liposuction in the neck area. It's not only going to remove fat, but it's going to lift and tighten that up. Would I jump into doing an upper eyelid removal of this skin called a blepharoplasty? Mm -hmm. I really would at this point. I was thinking at the beginning of the console that he would just recommend like a total tear down. So I was pleasantly surprised that he's recommending just very subtle changes. Move on to the third area, mm -hmm. okay? Contour. You know, everybody has a little bit of asymmetry. The right side of your face is a little bit higher than the left side. The left side's a little bit wider and drops a little bit. That's oh. why this is a little bit fuller here. Oh, I'd never noticed you see that, that? Yeah. I would very subtly contour this cheek area over here. A touch of wrestling here and here. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a little more roundness to your lips. Last area of skin. The skin itself has very little age change to it. Okay. okay, I'll take that. We're in the first consultation for a long time. Like a long time. Your chin mm -hmm. is is pinker. You've got rosacea. And rosacea is adult acne. So mm -hmm. we gotta treat the rosacea. You know, that's a whole long discussion in terms mm -hmm. of topical things, possibly oral things. So you wouldn't do anything to my nose? I'd like to see more length on your nose. I'd like to see your nose a little bit narrower. So it would be longer like this, is what you mean? Yeah, mean. yeah. I think that's, yeah, I think that's it. I think All that's right. everything. Great. That was interesting. <laughs> I thought that he was super professional. It seemed like he kind of was like, let's work with the face you have and not with the face you clipped out of a magazine, which is good. Cause like, this is the face I have. I grew it myself. Uh, I definitely feel not as good about myself as I did before. Obviously this is what I asked for, but it's still hard. So now we're going to go see Dr. Lee and we're gonna see what she says about turning my face into that of a model. I'm Dr. Linda Lee. I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon practicing here in Beverly Hills. So a consultation with me is typically me asking you first and foremost, what bothers you? Because it's not about me. It's not about anybody else in this room. It's about you. So the second surgeon's a little bit more like ordering in a restaurant and then getting what you ordered. Whereas the first surgeon was a little bit more like, here is a lasagna. Just as an experiment, if you were to 
shape my face into a fashion model standard, what would you do to my face? So we probably couldn't completely do that, but we could give you some aspects. What I always like to say is the classic beauty is an upside down egg. So a little fuller on top and rounding down to a narrow point in the center. All right, let's step into the office. Starting down from below, all the high-end models have incredible sharp jaw lines. Mm -hmm. So we would talk about a little bit of liposuction right through here. Yeah. We would get rid of this right here. Oh. You have a jaw line now. Okay. <laughs> when it comes to your nose, what we want to do is decrease the flare of it. So we actually mm -hmm. want to kind of bring it in, a little bit of Botox right through here, more cheeks up through here. Take out the small lines and then also give you a little bit of volume up here. Wow, now that I've seen my face this way, I don't know if I can unsee it. You could just take some duct tape. Well, Wrap yeah. it around the back of your head. She's very quick, she's very to the point, she's very about the upside down egg. Your eyes are fantastic in terms of the shape of your brows, but we would also like to see them just a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. So if we could just get rid of just a little bit up here in your upper eyelid. You mean take out some of the skin? Take here? out a little of that, the extra skin. You have beautiful lips, and but I can see that you're compensating with your lipstick and your liner. What we can do is with filler, we can actually give you more lips. This is a very popular thing right mm -hmm. now. Everybody wants the side lip. So she says all the things that she wants to have happen to my face really fast. It's like cheeks, lips, fillers, and it seems like it's not a lot, but it is. So do people come to you with like certain pictures of celebrities being like, I want this person's face? Patients don't come in with celebrity faces, but they do come in with faces of people from Instagram, from social networks they have just found that they happen to like. I explained to them that none of these pictures are real. These pictures are all Photoshop. So they just want to be Photoshop. People just want you to get in there with the blend tool. And Absolutely. just make them a new face. <laughs> if I could do that, I would be so wealthy, but I can't. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for coming helpful. in. Both the consults I've done so far have been very friendly, very professional, very good. And I was like, yep, good. I felt good in them. And I was like, good energy. Everyone's positive. Good thing. And then I would leave and be like, well, that's five things that I can't fix. I mean, I will say, like, they did both say that they would never actually just give a rundown of all a patient's flaws. So I did ask for that. That is what we are getting. I'm very mad at the patriarchy right now. It makes me really sad that that's where our money has to go. It has to literally go where our mouths are. Because that's another thing they had to fix, is make my lips bigger. It did seem that the things that would be done to my face were very small potatoes for them. It seemed bigger to me, I think, because this is stuff I've never experienced. But to them, it was like going to the grocery store. You want some fillers? You want some Botox? You want a different nose? Just throw it in the cart. We'll get it. So we're on our way to see the last surgeon. I think I know what they're going to say to me, but I'm really hoping that the third doctor doesn't add any new insecurities to the Easter basket of insecurities I already have. My name is Harrison Lee. I'm a oral maxillofacial surgeon, ENT, and facial plastic surgeon. My approach is usually I ask the patient what they are seeking first, and then give them my opinion. So are we ready to start the examination? Let's do it. OK, let's do it. So obviously this is a thought experiment. Right. Like I'm, you know, we're not actually going to do this. Okay, so let's go from the top down. Length here of the forehead is pretty good, but the brow is a little bit prominent, so I would like to uh, retract the bone here a little bit. And that means shave the bone right. down. Right, okay. shave the bone down. Oh. Sometimes what I do is I actually put cement in here, bone cement, to make it rounder from the side. Okay. It makes it very attractive. <laughs> okay. We need to reduce the uh, girth here, mm -hmm. reduce the jaw angles, mm -hmm. and possibly do what is called a genioplasty. Mm -hmm. The chin's a little bit prominent mm -hmm. and a little bit long. So what we need to do is actually bring it up and back a little bit. So they just shave all that off. Right, and then I take out a middle segment of the chin. There's a lot of bone restructuring. I'm very surprised by that. And then what we need to do then is a little bit of a lift. Mm -hmm. Did you want to do anything with the nose? Yeah, I mean, do everything that you would say. I would maybe define the tip a little bit. Mm -hmm. This needs to come in. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe open up the upper eye a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Take out a little bit of fat. Lower eyes look great. Okay. I keep waiting for him to be like, oh, also, you need to fill in all your lines. And he never says it, which makes me hope that maybe he didn't see them. Total operating time will be about six hours. Wow, that's that's a long time. But it'll be a transformation. 
One funny thing about the last surgeon said nothing about my mouth. The first surgeon to say nothing about my mouth. And he thought my cheeks were great. Yeah, see, the compliments will stick with me. You know, this is my third time, so I'm like getting a little used to it, but every time is hard, man. Being in a plastic surgeon's office, and having them tell you all the things about your face that you've lived with for your entire life that really need to be fixed in order for society to view you as beautiful enough to be a model is a lot. It's a lot emotionally to do it once. And I did it three times. <laughs> so we got the photos back from the Photoshop artist today. I'm gonna go show Kristen. Hi. What up? This oh. is for you. Oh, oh, it's for me. It's a present. It's the photos. Okay, all ready? right. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's look at these. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here's number one. Oh. This actually doesn't look like, this is not too far from me. It's like I look like myself seven years ago, but like not quite. It's really strange. It, this is actually like pretty natural. I'm actually really surprised that this is what the surgeon thought would be close to model standard because it's not that far from my face. It basically just is my face minus about 15% of the skin. You ready for surgery two? Yep. Okay, this one is much different from how I look now. It is, woo, I'm like Malibu Barbie. This looks like if someone played me in a movie. This is how hot they would be. Now that I'm looking at it in comparison to like my original face, like wow. That is like not even the same person. This is kind of more what I was thinking in terms of like a model stage. Surgeon 1's photo and Surgeon 2's photo did not look alike at all. Will Surgeon 3's photo look like either of theirs? Let's find out. All right, I'm opening it. Nope, it does not. Surgeon 3's photo might be the furthest away from me, I think. My chin is gone, but my neck is very long. My chin is, you know, a recurring guest star on my face with a lot of prominence. So to see my face without a chin is very strange. It'd be like if they fired half the cast on The Office. I thought it would be different, but I didn't think it would be this different. I didn't think it would be like completely different visions. You ready, Fred? I'm ready. Okay. okay. Let's All right. do this. Here we go. Oh my God. It's too early for this, hold on a second. My <laughs> mind is not. Yeah, I see the biggest change just in like neck and chin. Each one suggested different lips. The middle one is very Kylie mm -hmm. to me. It definitely kind of like goes to show like, okay, there isn't one like standard of beauty. And so yeah. why are we stacking people up against this thing that is not real. What one doctor would do is probably completely different from what another doctor would do. If I were a surgeon, people would wake up and I've just been like, I gave you 10 more teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so if three professional surgeons can't agree on a standard of beauty, who's to say that any of them are right or that any of them are wrong? I think my big takeaway is that yeah, beauty is very subjective. What was interesting about this experiment is that it gave me a lot of insight into what I like about my face, about what makes it special. The things about my face that I think are sometimes like unattractive or ugly, those are part of my calling card. I think it's really easy to look down on people who get plastic surgery or plastic surgery in general, but I think it's important to keep in mind that there are some people for whom plastic surgery means the difference between a really full life and not. So to be clear, I am not advocating for anybody to get plastic surgery, but if it's a choice that you wanna make for your body, make the choices you wanna make for your body. But on the other hand, I grew up seeing a lot of faces that were beautiful and perfect in TV and movies, but I never saw any faces that looked like mine. So why not have my face there now?